What we've got is free hot water. On the side of the house at a slightly jaunty angle are two 300 watt solar panels and they drive a quite an interesting system. What we've got here is an old ambulance inverter. So this is a 1.8 kilowatt inverter that was used in ambulances. What we've got here is a Chinese induction heater and uh, we've just got some water on the boil here. I'm just making myself a, a small coffee, a little coffee for one. Underneath all of that lot, we've got a big bank of 115 amp hour AGM batteries. Then what we have here is a solar charge controller. Hopefully you can read the meter of the inverter there. And you can see that we're drawing about 110 amps at 12 volts. Solar powered hot water for free. So every morning we come downstairs, I put a saucepan full of water on this stove top here and we boil water and we make our tea. When my wife wants has one of her soup noodles we boil water here every time we we want to boil water it always happens here there you go in the time that it's taken me to explain this system to you we've got boiling water and the and the induction heat is only on 50 percent let me just turn that off yeah you can see the steam just billowing out of that there and when we turn it off we can see here then that the uh, the voltage on the in on the uh, inverter is uh, a nice happy 12.5 volts. So the batteries are uh, maybe sort of three quarters, between half and three quarters full. And now we can go and make ourselves a nice coffee. Ah, la di da di da. Look at that. Hot cup of coffee. Ah. Oh, oh that's good. Now the question you're gonna ask is, is it worth it? One simple answer, no. <laughs> Let me explain why. I set all of this stuff up rather temporarily. Um, and to be honest, I'm just sort of keeping it as a temporary system at the moment. Uh, but it does need to look a little bit prettier than it does at the moment. Uh, I think the inverter cost me second hand, maybe 50 or 60 quid. Over here, we've got one, two, three, four rather large Halfords, 115 amp hour batteries. The thing, <laughs> and and the key thing here is, is the wiring up of all of these batteries also costs quite a bit of money as well, because the cable that you need for this is quite expensive. But I found a little, a sort of a little trick, if you like. I ended up buying some jump leads with thick cables and used that to wire all of these batteries up. And we need them all wired in parallel, 12 volts, so that the, the inverter runs at the correct voltage because the inverter is 12 volts. And then we've got a solar charge controller. Let's just cost this up quickly. Probably looking at about a hundred pound a battery. So, and then you've got a solar charge controller which costs about 50 quid, so that's 450. Then you've got an inverter. Uh, inverters could be up to 300 pounds if you buy them brand new. Then you've got two solar panels outside on the wall that you need to buy. Uh, those are 300 watt, 36 volt solar panels. Uh, those are uh, another £120, £150 a go. Uh, again, all of this stuff I bought secondhand apart from the batteries. So you can see where this is going at the moment. We're talking about sort of £650. Uh, oh, 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 of course. Of course, we've forgotten, which is hidden under here, we've forgotten the Chinese induction hob as well. Uh, that's about another £50. So let's call, oh, wow, this is going to cost you in the region of £700 to build with new parts. If you're lucky like me and you know a few people, you can get some of these parts a little bit cheaper. What's the payback going to be on this? So just for fun, I typed into Google, how much does it cost to boil a kettle? 6.8p to boil a full kettle. Um, but really, we don't sort of use it like that. So if you only boil the water you needed, it's £9.34, around a tenner. But if you boiled a full kettle each time, it would cost you nearly £50, £49.64. So, so basically what we're saying then is it costs maybe £700 to put that system together if we're only using it to boil a couple of full kettles of water a day which is about fair then that's going to be 50 quid a year which ultimately means that if we divide 700 by 50 which means that the payback <laughs> the, 
payback on this is 14 years. 14 years before this pays you back for the investment. Um, that is assuming that the solar panels last for 14 years, the inverter lasts for 14 years, the batteries last for 14 years. It's sort of, uh, this is the reason why I said it doesn't make sense to do it. It's really good fun doing it. It's really nice knowing that you're getting yourself a good old cup of coffee or a cup of tea you know, and it's not costing you anything to heat that water. So in many respects, that's really quite cool. We do use it for other things. We use it for uh, cooking burgers and stuff, but we've got to be really careful how we use it because it's in the lounge and it makes the lounge smell and there's a little bit of spatter. So you just got to sort of balance that a little bit. It doesn't make sense to do it. The payback is just terrible. So for me, it cost about sort of £300, let's say. So that's actually a, a six a six year payback for me, which... Um, makes a little bit more sense uh, and that's just because I sourced these components from different places I didn't, didn't buy them new from the shops off the shelf so I just thought I'd better explain how we've got this wired up so we've got the solar panels that are outside two 36 volt solar panels here on the wall 300 watts so that's actually sort of 600 watts total and then we've got a charge controller here the charge controller then goes into the 12 volt batteries uh, times four at uh, 115 amps each so that's uh, 460 amp hours worth of 12 volts there going into the 1800 watt inverter that's the big yellow box the ambulance inverter which then connects to the induction hob i've also got an option to be able to plug that into the house into one of the main sockets in the house and drive the switchboard backwards and run the house from all of this lot. But obviously you need to make sure you throw your trip switch before you do that. And if I'm honest with you, I do not recommend doing that by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, please just don't do that. It's dangerous and a little bit naughty, but very occasionally I do do that. But anyway, ultimately that's pretty much how it works. It's that simple. The question is, is does it make sense? And I don't honestly know the answer to that. I haven't done the math. Uh, I think it would be quite hard to do the math. Um, only because, you know, you, you've got to try and factor into the account that, that, that you're uh, having to post-process all of these old solar panels once they start getting thrown away. You can't just stick them in a landfill, can you? Um, and batteries, you know, lithium-ion batteries and lead batteries and things like that. It just, oh, I don't know if if... if if it sort of is better for the environment that we stop burning coal or stop nuclear production and do solar energy production uh, sort of yeah I'm, I'm sure it must be it must be better it must be better right anyway who knows uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you <laughs> i think that's beyond the scope of definitely beyond the scope of this video but um ladies and gentlemen thanks ever so much for watching do take care have yourselves a wonderful week and weekend and we'll catch you in the next video cheers and beers folks bye for now